Hey guys, welcome back to another Destiny 2 video. Today's video is the first Strand Hunter build, and it's something I'm really excited to share with you because it's one I specifically made for higher difficulty content. I'm sure you guys have been seeing a ton about Strand Grapple and Strand Hunter Super Regen and everything, and I wanted to bring you guys a video that's a bit different than what you've probably already seen. It's definitely a build that I think has some potential with endgame PvE, specifically with the 80% damage resistance we can have at all times, the constant suspending effects constantly available to deal with any mini boss, Hive Guardian, Tormentor, or champions of any kind. And on top of that, we have some really good damage output and constant heavy ammo gen for us and our fire team so i hope you guys enjoyed the build be sure to like and subscribe if you liked what you saw here today and let me know down in the comments what you thought of the build and what you want to see in the future thank you so much i greatly appreciate the support getting right into the subclass then for abilities i'm using marksman dodge just to reload our equipped weapon whenever we use our class ability if you want to use gambler's dodge you can although the melee already has some intrinsic regen built into it so it's really your call for a grenade, I'm using the Shackle Grenade. As the suspending effect it applies is one of the best in the entire game, I put suspending up with restoration effects as well as invisibility. It can basically shut down any enemy that isn't a boss or mini boss. For aspects, we're using Widow Silk and Ensnaring Slam. Widow Silk is just going to grant us an additional grenade charge. And while we do have an additional effect when it comes to our Grapple Grenade, Grapple Grenades just really aren't strong for higher difficulty content. And while you do have that melee, you can also take advantage of with your Grapple Grenade. That melee isn't exactly powerful, and in higher difficulty content, most enemies are just going to shrug it off, so the shock grenade is a much better option in my opinion. For ensnaring slam, you just use your air move while you're airborne, and this will slam you to the ground and deal a suspending effect in a short radius around you. Again, doubling with this and our shackle grenade means that we can suspend enemies constantly with this build. For our fragments, the first is Threat of Mind, and anytime that we defeat suspended targets, it grants us class ability energy. Again, using our grenade or our class ability, we'll then suspend those targets, which after we defeat, we'll then regen our class ability back. For that same effect, we're using Threat of Generation, which any damage that we deal will generate grenade energy, again, regening our shackle grenade. We also have Threat of Continuity, which increases the suspend, unraveling, and sever effects that we apply. It's actually a 50% increase for suspending effects, meaning that it brings it from 8 seconds to 12 seconds, just increasing the quality of life of all the effects that we have. And then we're using Threat of Warding, which picking up an Orb of Power grants us Woven Mail. And Woven Mail is a 50 to 60% damage resistance in PvE. And again, I'll be going over ways that we can stack this damage resistance up with other effects to have a near constant 80% damage resistance. Briefly going over the artifact mods that actually work with this build. Starting off, we're using Volatile Flow, and this will just grant our Void Weapons Volatile Rounds anytime we pick up an Orb of Power. We're also using Untangler, which anytime we destroy a Tangle with a Strand Weapon, it creates a suspending, damaging AoE effect. We're also using Bricks from Beyond, which grants us a chance at Heavy Ammo anytime we defeat a powerful combatant with a Void Weapon, and this works for our Special and Heavy Weapon, by the way. We're also using Threaded Blast, which increases the area of effect and damage of that suspending blast when you shoot a Tangle. The last two perks are going to be Defiant Armory and Origin Hones. Defiant Armory is going to buff a few specific Origin traits. The one we're mainly taking advantage of is Ambush. And with Origin Hones, anytime that an Overcharge modifier is active, any weapon with Nano Trace Rockets, Text Balance Stock, Noble Deeds, and again specifically Ambush, is also going to be overcharged. What this means for activity like Nightfalls, for example, is anytime that the Overcharge modifier is active, for example, it's currently a 25% bonus to Grenade Launchers, this will then apply for any weapon with Ambush or the other Origin traits that were listed. Onto the armor and the mods then. I'm rocking Heavy Ammo and Special Ammo Finder on our helmet. If you want to rock Dual Heavy or a Heavy and a Scout, it's completely up to you. And I'm also rocking a Void Strand Dual Siphon, just so our Strand weapons and our Void weapons can produce Orbs of Power after getting a few kills. For Gauntlets, I'm using Bolstering Detonation, and this will grant us Class Ability Energy when we deal damage with our Grenade. While our Shackle Grenade doesn't do a lot of damage, it's just based on Hit Registration. It's not actually based on the damage the Grenade does. This is just a nice way to regen our class ability back. And I'm also using two stacks of Void Loaders just to support our heavy and special weapon. Again, if you want to support your strand weapons instead or a different kind of weapon, go ahead and swap these out. For chest piece, we're actually using the six Coyote Exotic. And the main reason we're doing this is just so that we get a second dodge charge. This allows any kind of class ability regen to overcharge into a second dodge ability. This means that we can have two shackle grenades and two ensnaring slams, which basically means that with the regen that we're getting from this build, we always have at least one of those options active at all times. And for the mods on it, I'm using a Void Reserve to again support our heavy weapon, swap that out however you wish. I'm also using Charged Up, which increases the stacks of armor charge that we can hold up to four from three, and then a Resist Mod, which again, you can fit in based on whatever activity you're doing. For our legs, I'm using two stacks of Void Weapon Surge, and this will increase the damage that our Void Weapons do for 10 seconds. On top of that, I'm using Stacks on Stacks, just to increase the amount of armor charge we get every time we pick up an Orb Power to two instead of one. Finally, onto our mark, we're using Reaper, which after we use our class ability, our next final weapon blow will spawn an Orb of Power, again, contributing to the Orb Gen that this build already has. 
We're also using time dilation just to increase the effects of weapon surge from 10 seconds to 15 seconds per stack of armor charge. And since we're using stacks on stacks on top of that, means that every time we pick up an orb of power, or void weapons have an increase to their damage for 30 seconds. And then I'm also using proximity ward just to give us an overshield while we perform a finisher. This one's really up to you. If you would rather swap in something like distribution or bomber, for example, you totally can. Finally, onto the weapons for this build. Again, any strand or void weapon works fantastic, but I'm going to go over a few recommendations that I have. For a primary weapon, I'm going to recommend the Immortal SMG, which was the last weapon in the previous trials rotation. This can roll with a variety of perks. I personally like Hatchling on it. It can also roll with Target Lock, which is a nice damage boosting perk. I'd also recommend Rufus's Fury, which is the assault rifle from the new Root of Nightmares raid. I have a decent roll with Demolitionist and Hatchling, and it is a red border weapon, so you can craft this. But realistically, any strand weapon works perfectly fine with this build. The main reason for this is that we're using our heavy weapon basically all the time, so our strand weapon is mainly there just to shoot the tangles that we generate. For energy weapons, I have a few recommendations. The first is Wave Splitter, which if you're anything like me, you have not touched this thing in a very long time but the main reason we're using this is because it got an indirect buff in lightfall and with the seasonal mods and artifact mods it actually works really really well with this build now the main focus of this weapon is that it has three alternating damage levels that oscillate between themselves as you hold down and fire now while this does seem like a downside with supercharged battery anytime you pick up an orb of power not only is the maximum damage oscillation set to its highest level meaning that for a short period of time you deal the maximum damage with this weapon but the fire mode also suppresses targets on hit and the main reason this got a lot better is because with armor charge, now orbs of power are everywhere and everyone is making way more than they did before. So this means that supercharged battery is always active with this weapon. And the suppressing effect basically shuts down any and all enemies in PvE, again with the exception of certain champions and bosses. Another void trace rifle I recommend is Hollow Denial, which I actually recommended in my last build video for Warlock. By the way, go check that out if you haven't, the build's absolutely insane. The main perks we're rolling with this are lead from gold. This allows this weapon to obtain ammo anytime we pick up heavy ammo as well, meaning that we can fully spec into heavy ammo with dual finders and the stacking on top bricks from beyond means that this weapon and our heavy weapon always have ammo to go through. And with enhanced lead from gold, it just means we pick up even more ammo. And then of course we have Repulsor Brace, which Repulsor Brace finally got fixed going into Lightfall, so it's absolutely insane now. For those that don't know, defeating a target with a void debuff, such as Volatile Rounds, which comes from Volatile Flow this season, not only grants us a 45 HP overshield, but while that overshield is active, we have a 50% damage resistance on top of it. When we take into account Repulsor Brace's 50% damage and its 45 HP overshield, Woven Mail's 50 to 60% resistance, as well as our intrinsic 30% resistance from tier 10 resilience. This means that we have an 80% damage resistance at all times, and again, this isn't even considering something like a specific resist mod, which can bring our resistance value even further. And with its origin trait extrovert, anytime that we get final blows near multiple combatants, it restores a bit of our health. The final energy weapon I'm recommending is Nessus Ablation. Now, I don't have the exact perk combination I want on this, but you can roll destabilizing rounds, which anytime that you get a kill with this weapon, nearby targets become volatile, and then you can stack this with Repulsor Brace, which does the same effect that I just went over. Plus, when we stack volatile flow on top of it this season, this means that this weapon applies volatile, it's not only enemies you're shooting at, but also nearby enemies once you get the kill. With Repulsor Brace, it then guarantees you that overshield and the damage resistance with it. Plus, when you consider the origin trait Harmonic Resonance, whenever we stack on top multiple weapons from the Root of Nightmare set, so for example, Rufus's Fury and Nessus Oblation, this means that this weapon has increased reload speed and handling, and also deals increased damage against Tormentors and Lucent High for PvE. Finally, onto the heavy weapons, the first one I'm recommending is Retrofit Escapade. This was an absolute monster last season, and it's something that is still fantastic in Season 20. I'm going with the Enhanced 4th Times the Charm and Enhanced Target Lock. 4th Times the Charm is just going to allow this weapon to basically shoot indefinitely as long as we're hitting our crits. And then with Enhanced Target Lock, the longer that we keep hitting a target with this weapon, the further its damage increases. And then with the Origin Trait Ambush, it improves the range, handling, and damage of combatants during the opening moments of an engagement, so it kind of trades off with Ambush and Target Lock. Ambush is going to buff the initial damage, and then as time goes on and you keep shooting, Target Lock will then take over for Ambush and buff that damage instead. And again, this is also being increased by our Void Weapon Surge, plus whenever you consider that Ambush is getting a percentage increase through Defiant Armory, and we're stacking this with Origin Hones, being that as long as there's an overcharged modifier, the weapon itself deals a 25% increase in its base damage, means that this weapon absolutely shreds enemies in all levels of PvE. And again, it's also getting Volatile Rounds from Volatile Flow, meaning that this weapon is a monster in endgame activity. You can also use something like Deterministic Chaos with this build if you wanted to, although I feel it's not really the best, especially in this season. It's still a great pick for the season, don't get me wrong. If you want to use Deterministic Chaos, you absolutely can, and it'll do great with this build. I just feel that Retrofit Escapade, especially when you consider that this weapon will always be overcharged in certain activities and will always have its ambush trait increase with a seasonal mod, it just does so much better. And even though it can't weaken a target, its damage output is just way, way better. Again, in certain activities, its base damage is going to be increased by 25%, 
Ambush is going to be increased. We are using Void Search to increase the damage of this weapon even further. And it can also benefit from Volatile Round. It's just absolutely insane for any level of PvE content. Anyways, that's the Hunter build, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. Hunter is very similar to Titan with Strand, as its main focus is just suspending enemies and not really specking into a lot of other things. However, we are set up to get a new Strand aspect for each class next season, so hopefully Hunter gets something a little more unique and allows us to play in a much more creative way other than just its ensnaring slam ability. But this build is still incredibly fun and really good in PvE. Like I said, we have an 80% damage resistance, we have constant suspensions with this build, and we're also taking advantage of Retrofit Escapade, which is one of the best heavy weapons in the entire game. And with this build specifically, we can basically just shoot it like a primary weapon and never run out of ammo. Thank you guys so much for watching this. I greatly appreciate your support on these videos. Like I said, I have a few more in the works currently, so stay tuned for them. Let me know what you thought of this build down in the comments below, and let me know any suggestions for future videos. I greatly appreciate any and all feedback, and have a great day.